Uh, Andrew Monaco is the voice of the uh, Texas A&M Aggies down in College Station. You can follow him on X at Andrew Monaco, M-O-N-A-C-O underscore senior S-R and follow the voice of the Aggies all season long. They've rattled off five straight wins after losing to Notre Dame at Kyle Field to start their season. And Andrew, it's great to see you. I know that uh, Elko, their new coach, uh, said at the time that, you know, we're not going to flinch. We got beat. They came in here and beat us flat out. We're a, a growth team. Uh, we're here to get better every week, every day. And boy, have they lived up to that. Uh, and then we'll get into Saturday. But what do you think of what he said after the fail against Notre Dame and the success since? Scott, he said even before that game, he told his coaches that if we beat Notre Dame, then the entire uh, message around all of college football is going to be, wow, Texas A&M, they're dark horse contenders. And if they lost to Notre Dame, be ready for this. Elko's not the guy. Got to get a new guy in there. Brand new coaching staff. It's failed. <laughs> it's not a one-week rebuild, right? Or it's not a one-week build, if you will. So Mike had everybody set up for that. And I, I, I'm with you. This is a team that keeps getting better every single week. They did it against McNeese. I thought the road win at Florida was the one where, and even Coach Elko said this, that's the most strain and effort he had seen from this team that gave them that road win for a team that had struggled in true road games. And then they keep building from there until this past Saturday. And they know the job's not done, but quite a stretch for the first six weeks to be five and one in his first season back here at Texas A&M. You can see the growth from week to week. The guy can coach flat out. Everyone saw that at Duke, and now he's on a, you know, he's gone up in weight class. I think he's like a fighter moving up uh, the food chain and going for a, a bigger belt at a, at a heavier weight. I think he's doing uh, a great job. I have to say, like, one thing I noticed is that, remember, they went on the road and won in a hostile environment. You talked about it. But Missouri hadn't been on the road yet. So I think they're a lot better football team, frankly, than what I saw on Saturday. That was a team that went on the road and laid an egg. And obviously, A&M played fantastic. I thought Moss was incredible. We'll talk about him. But let's face facts. It is brutal to go on the road in the SEC, and it's brutal to play your first road game in a place like Kyle Field. Like Notre Dame pulled it off, but they're not in the SEC. It's tough in conference to go on the road and win a game in anything like Big Ten, Big 12, mm -hmm. SEC, ACC. I don't care what it is. Those road games are brutal. Could not agree with you more. I, I totally agree. And you have to be you actually have to be better on the road than you are at home. And for Missouri, they're going to learn some things about themselves. And I'm, I have total confidence that Eli Drinkwitz will say, hey, OK, guys. This is what we did. That's not us. How do we get better? It's the only thing you can do after a loss. And that's Notre Dame. Here's the, the beauty of Notre Dame coming in. Notre Dame has played under Marcus Freeman. They played under Al Golden, especially that defense. And they have been comfortable together. What I'm watching with Mike Elko and this Jay Bateman defense is getting comfortable together now through six weeks. There's still a way to go. There's still a way to, they're not a finished product yet. It reminds me of Mike being here in 2018 under Jimbo Fisher as the defensive coordinator. There was an awful lot that he installed. And even he says, we were better in 2019 than we were in 2018. Doesn't mean you can't get better over the course of the season. And I asked Mike, can, is this a team that can do that over the course of the season? And he says, you're seeing that. Scott, I think the other thing is, when you come into a program, you've got to address what you have and you've got to address the deficiencies and not only right. just address the, the deficiencies, you got to correct those. And that's what I think Mike Elko was able to do. Can you correct those deficiencies? The offensive line is better. The defensive line is a monster and the back end on defense is better. And that's what's showing up this season. How about Moss? I mean, the guy Ooh. had three tutties and they were up 24 zip. And then the, I think it was the first play of the second half. He had another tutty. I was like, this game's over. They were already up 24 zip. And I think it really uh, 
just literally ripped the soul out of Missouri's chest. I mean, they were done yeah. right then and there. Yeah, yeah, it did. And and for Texas A&M, at times they've kind of stumbled out of that second half gate, but not with that run. And the sea just parted and Le'Veon did the rest. He's a mature young man. And I'll be honest, he's in better shape than he was in the past. And all that is paying off. Scott, I call it this. It's all the work that a player does in the dark that fans never see. And then when it shows up on the field, you know, it leads to more confidence when you're running. And it's that trust with one another. Like he trusts that that part of the line is going to be open and he's getting through that line. He's not dancing. He's getting through. And that's, that's what's really been impressive. Look, he was the number two back. It was Reuben Owens who was going to be the bellwether back. He gets hurt in training camp. So Le'Veon and Amari Daniels and EJ Smith, they've done it collectively. But Le'Veon is getting most of the rushes and doing an awful lot of damage. But he's now seeing all the work that he did in this offseason is paying off for number eight. Respectfully, I got one minute. Uh, you got your quarterback back on Saturday. Connor, I thought, played very well. I did not think uh, Brady Cook played well. I was surprised because he's a really good quarterback. And I thought the Aggies took his game right out of his hand and said, not today. It ain't happening today. But I thought Connor played great after missing three games. I think simply it's a line of scrimmage game and the offensive line gave Connor the time and established the running game. Brady Cook was on the run because of the defensive line of the Aggies and Missouri couldn't get Nate Noel going. He's a very good running back. You know, Guys with the hands in the dirt, Scott, they determine everything. That confidence in Connor, and I think it was a defense where there's some windows that are open, and give Connor credit because he's a very good quarterback that way, and he threw into those windows. I'm with you. I'm thrilled for the young man, and now that he's healthy and throwing like that, this offense can proceed. I can't wait, Andrew, to see how they do the rest of the way, and then that last game against Texas on November 30th <laughs> is going to be sick. Uh, always great to see you, Andrew. Thanks, sir, taking the time to come on Coast to Coast, brother. Great job, Saturday.